Hello, tea friends. This is Barb Gully of Barb's Tea Service, and we're back in the studio for our podcast. I'm here with co-host, studio engineer, and arm candy, Chris Gully. It's a it's a it's a heavy burden <laughs> to do all that. I, I know, know. I know. A- and you do it well. Yeah, I know. So today, Chris, we are in the double digits. Amazing. I I, I say that. Uh, which number is this? 10. 10. Oh, so I think uh, this is also going to be rated uh, 10 out of 10 podcast. Oh, I think you're right. Yes. <laughs> As we're, we're the rating. That, well, that's that's only fair. It is. It we're, is. We're putting in the work. <laughs> <laughs> is that what that is? Okay. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. So today, our theme is going to be Tea Time. Yes. Tea Time Magazine. It, that what a great publication that is. It's an awesome publication. And we were set to do a whole different topic, mm-hmm. but Tea Time magazine came in. If you're a subscriber, you get a little bit early. That's yep. a that's a plus. Right. And it had my article about Lady Carnarvon. Yes. An interview we did with her back a little bit and we'll talk a little bit more about that and we're also going to be talking about the real Downton Abbey Mm -hmm. and Downton Abbey adjacent yes and T adjacent adjacent Uh, sometimes we have to stretch (laughs) yes Uh, but it's still all T there's a T related right stuff okay so but first there we go. I'm pouring. Okay, today we're drinking English breakfast tea. Yes. We had Scottish breakfast tea a few podcasts ago. We did. When we were talking about Scotland. Right. But this is English breakfast tea. And I'm going to take a little sip. Uh huh. Mm, how do you like this? Well, so um, I, I like it. It's a. Uh, um, to me, well, it's, it's a. Um, uh, so Sc- I think the Scottish breakfast was was very kind of robust. This is a little a little bit lighter. Yes. Um, and but I think it still kind of has a nice uh, you know caffeine kick to it, um, and um, it's got uh, like some uh, astringency into it, and and uh, you know, a comfortable amount of bitterness and. Um, I was trying to f- figure out there's a, there's a another kind of element in there maybe I don't know uh, kind of a am I picking up a maltiness or something? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Nice. Right. At, and I I loved how you described it because right. it really is earthy, uh, <laughs> tolerable bitterness. Right. 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 And that that malty taste, mm-hmm. which is very prevalent in the Irish. And Scottish breakfast yes. tea, and it's dialed back a little bit, right, for the English breakfast right. tea. So, I, I love how you d- nailed it there. Wow. I think you did a really well, good job. You. Thank of, you. Of I'm, getting, the, I'm getting better at this. <laughs> you are. You <laughs> are. And and I like it. I, it. We we're back, and it's in the morning. We like our caffeine right indulgence as right. well. But this is very nice. Yep. So, um, any any thoughts on English breakfast? Well, um, so. Uh, of course, um, I wanted your thoughts on this. Uh, uh, we, we believe a- a- anything we find on the internet is absolutely 100% true, correct? Of course. Or maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, uh, I was a little surprised to learn that, uh, uh, in the English breakfast, you know, that style or I don't know if it's not really a brand, but what we call it didn't come from England. Correct. Yes. It yeah. was in the 1800s. It yeah. was English ties. Right, right, right. Uh, the he, uh, gentleman from England, he was in New York. Right. And he put this together for, right. for folks who had gone across and visited England and enjoyed the tea that they were served. Right. So he branded it English breakfast. Yes. So I think that people in England were drinking it just didn't have that, they that didn't, title they, they just called it tea right <laughs> and, 
and they had it at breakfast. That's right. But I think what what in this case it was it was a good another good marketing. Yes. Tartanery. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, where people were going, okay, it's English breakfast. Right. I like things associated with England. Right. And mm-hmm. so that was again, that was kind of a yeah. nice brand. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, very so interesting. Learn that. So yeah. great. I had selected English breakfast today mm-hmm. for two reasons. Mm-hmm. Tell me. <laughs> well, one, it was to tie into our interview with Lady Carnarvon, mm-hmm. which is in the current Tea Time magazine. Yep. Yeah. So, so it's hitting the the uh, stands now, correct? Or, or if you're a subscriber, you get a little early. Yes. Okay. If you're a subscriber, you right. get it early. That's a great perk of right. subscribing. But it'll be on the newsstands at libraries and yep. uh, different retailers, and, right? Yep. And you'll get it at towards the end of the month. Okay. Probably third week. Okay. Or so. Right. So when I sat down with Lady Carnarvon, I asked her what her favorite tea was. Uh uh-huh. She gave me two. Yes. One of them was Lapsong Suchong, mm-hmm. which we had noted earlier. We're going to devote some time in a future broadcast. That is an interesting tea. It is. Yeah. It's like drinking a campfire. That's right. It's very smoky. Right. So, and she also said that her other favorite tea was English breakfast. Yes. So, I'm we're having that in honor of Lady right. Carnarvon. Yeah. The other reason is we're going to be talking about some historic English manners. Mm-hmm. But it might be a nice tie into that yes okay all right so okay i i am a as you know a contributing writer to tea time magazine yes and i have been writing for them for about 10 years yes first time was uh i was a contributor to the tea time diaries yes so that's readers can just write in something Mm -hmm. and i wrote about a tea lady we had met in denver colorado right and from there, my first published paid article was yes. on Downton Abbey, our visit to Highclere Castle mm-hmm. in 2015. And so the series was, was kind was still active. I mean, it was it maybe what season two or something like that? Or I think it was winding down. Okay, uh, about that time to about their their. So, fourth or fifth season. So this was uh, so kind of as a sidelight. Uh, so we were in uh, Great Britain, and so in the U.S. they will show it on PBS, but it's like six months later. Right. So we were in uh, in England, and so we we saw an episode of Downton Abbey. Uh, right. Was that the year? And you know what? I think that was in 2012 when we were in Ireland. Okay, okay. Oh, all right. And we saw it six Uh, months earlier. Right. And we had plot spoilers all over the place. The fate of Lady Sybil. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And we knew that. And I remember when we were watching it when we returned home, nobody wanted to hear the spoilers. So we we kept it to ourselves. We were pretty good about that. Yeah. But when I watched it again, I was hoping for a different outcome. Maybe something had had changed or no. transpired but no. anyway no. yes yes so that that's yeah. that's another okay uh time with, that we did get to see right. it early but we did probably see it while we were in england as right. well right this is the the issue and you know for those who are watching i'm just going to show that yep. this mm-hmm. is this is one of my first ones right and we were in england so this is 2015 right this article was published early 2016 right but when we went there this time we went with Matt and Rachel. Right. Our children. Right. Rob didn't come this right. time. Mm-hmm. And when he was in the studio with us a few weeks ago, yeah. he had mentioned our, the first time we all went together. Right, right, right. So this time we went, Rachel and I went to do the Downton Abbey tour. Uh-huh. And we went to Bampton Village, yep. which is where they filmed the, the village scenes of Downton Abbey. Right. And then we went to Highclere Castle, right. a.k.a. the real Downton Abbey. Right. And did that whole tour. They don't let you take pictures. No. But yeah. the pictures that you see in Tea Time are furnished by right. Highclere Castle. Right. They want to control the image, obviously. Yep. And, and it's their stock photos. Yep. Yes, they're beautiful. Yeah. So that was also a time where, while Rachel and I were doing all this stuff, mm-hmm. I think you and Matt kept pretty busy. Yep. But together, we went to Buckingham Palace, uh-huh. Hampton Court Palace. Yes. And do you remember where we went for tea? 
so we've been to it. Was this the Claridge's? It was. Visit? Yes. So we had. So I think our our mo for that was we would fly. We'd fly. It's you know you're kind of flying overnight, and uh, uh, I I try to sleep on a plane, but really cannot. So you're kind. By the time you get there, you're you're running on fumes. <laughs> right. Uh, been up for about twenty four hours, and. Um, and all you want to do is sleep. And and so you really need to not do that because <laughs> then you're going to blow two or three days get, right. getting on schedule. So you have to kind of force yourself. So we solved that by going to a, a ritzy or, or a very fancy tea room called Claridge's in London and um, and uh, had a, a great time while trying to stay awake. <laughs> exactly. It served <laughs> two purposes. Right. And I always like to share the pictures when I'm doing my tea etiquette right. talks. I like to show the ones from Claridge's because most most renowned tea places will have an amazing offering. Right. But these desserts were yeah. masterpieces. Yes. Yes. They were beautiful. Yep. And uh, as I like to say, almost didn't want to eat them. And yet... And yet you, 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 <laughs> you overcame that. Yes. And, and yes. So any other memories that you have from that trip any significant well uh so uh, when you were off uh doing your your trip uh we you know took advantage of uh, we did a lot of walking in in museums and uh you know they have uh, you know the british museum and the victoria and albert museum and british natural history museum and so if you're a museum uh geek you can really geek out on that <laughs> and then i think um i can't remember if this was the trip uh uh, I stumbled across uh, a really, uh, to me, a great Italian restaurant in London yes. uh, called De Mario, yes. Kensington. Yes. And um, so that was that, that kind of turned into our go-to place every time we would uh, visit London. I'd like to get at least one meal there. And we're, I've never been disappointed. No, we did that uh, subsequently the last yeah. couple times, but yeah. we tried to do that when we were there in the fall right and yeah we had a little little um misunderstanding evidently and this is why you travel to find out things yes there are two <laughs> de mario uh italian restaurants completely unrelated to each other right and uh and so they the uh, the staff there uh, patiently uh, explained that to us uh, rather dull americans <laughs> <laughs> There's more than one. What? You know, yeah. we who live in a world yeah. of franchises. Yeah. So, uh, but anyway, so uh, it, uh, and that was, I would say, uh, just as great. It was. Yeah. It was. The food was yeah. fabulous and yeah. so was the service. Yeah. So, okay. All right. All right. So, as I mentioned, the that that was in Tea Time, that article with Lady Carnarvon right. was in, in tea, tea Time 2016. And we... We had a scheduling conflict, mostly right. on Lady C's part yeah, because right. well, very, very busy woman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's running an estate. <laughs> exactly, and so we conducted the interview via phone and email. Right, right. But this time, and and before I I talk about the the interview, but they also Tea Time had a special edition British yes. special edition that was an update of our article right. from 2016. This was 2019 in anticipation of the first Downton Abbey movie, uh -huh. which was great. And then we met up with Lady Carnarvon, as I mentioned earlier, uh, almost two years right. to yeah. this yeah. day. Yeah. And we, had, uh, we met her in Newport, Rhode Island. Right. And she was there as part of a Gilded Age Downton Abbey event. Mm -hmm. And we're fans of both series. Right. They have a common denominator. Do you know what that is? Oh, uh, uh, I should know this. What was it? The writer and creator is... Julian Fellows. Right. Yes. That's the common denominator. Oh, oh okay. All right. <laughs> oh, I was looking for some deep meaning Something. here. No. Yes. All right. So... There, and there is a connection, so, for the Gilded Age and Downton Abbey. Right. I always refer to Gilded Age as the prequel mm -hmm. to, to Downton Abbey. Right. And it involves the nouveau riche mm -hmm. families. Right. Who, and this Gilded Age period is, is roughly 
post Civil War uh-huh. to 1900, early right. 1900s. Right. So this is where all this crazy wealth came about. Yeah, great wealth was being created, and people needed to spend it on stuff. And they did. And they right? did. Yes. And, and very ostentatious. And in Newport, mm-hmm. they had built. That was where the the new the old and new money built right. these cottages. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Sixty thousand square foot. Yeah. And we had talked earlier about the Gilded Age Mansion in in Florida uh-huh. that we went to see. Uh huh. Flagler. Flagler right. in Palm Beach. So this was a, another enclave right. of the the wealthy, and these were the homes of some of the Vanderbilt families. Mm-hmm. We had the Breakers. That's the biggest. Right. Marble House, mm-hmm. owned by Alba mm-hmm. Vanderbilt, and her connection to oh, uh, so England. this uh, Churchill, right? Oh yeah. Oh so, <laughs> all right. A little yes. A little skip there. Yeah. So, Alba Vanderbilt, her daughter Consuelo, right, married the Duke of Marlborough, right, and that he really needed the money. Oh yeah, okay. Remember right. that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. yeah. that money, her right. dowry, yeah. just replenished. Yeah. But Blenheim Palace. Right, right. But as you noted, right, that is where Winston Churchill was yes. born. Yes, it's kind of like six degrees. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. He was. It wasn't planned. No, no. But um, his mother was a partier right yeah. down to the yeah last minute. <laughs> so we get, we when we visited there, right. that was back probably 2018. Uh huh. That, that was something, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was great. Yep. Okay, so back to Lady Carnarvon. So we were we were there in Newport, and you and I have been to Newport uh-huh. uh, before yep. and toured the, the cottages, and Rachel and I did this as right. well. But we met Lady C at the patio of the Breakers, and right. we got to sit down. This time it was in person, right. face-to-face, yep. just wonderful. She's super charming, yep. very Gr- pretty woman. Yep, very gracious. Very gracious. And... This was when we met with her. They were promoting the well, two things. The second Downton Abbey movie came out, right? Had just come out, right? And she had also written a book, right? The Earl and the Pharaoh. Uh huh. This is about her husband's great grandfather, right. And his expedition, uh, King Tut. King Tut. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So, so that was very special, and that is in this most recent right. article of Tea Time. Mm-hmm. And when I asked Lady C, this mm-hmm. last last sneak peek into the article right. I'll give, because the article is, is she she gives us a lot of information. Right. But I asked her what her favorite tea room was. Uh-huh. And her favorite tea room, she said, when I'm in London, I go to the Ritz. As, as we all do. <laughs> <laughs> we do. And that was... So the last article I wrote for Tea Time was the March April issue mm-hmm. with Dick and Ann, Angel Strawbridge. Right, right. And when I asked her what her favorite tea room, she had two in London right. and but one was the Ritz. Uh-huh. Everybody loves the Ritz. What's not to love? There's nothing not to love. <laughs> okay. That was our first experience right. of afternoon tea in London. That yep. was with you, me and Rachel. Yep. Now we had now uh, so in, in New York City, Manhattan. Yes. There's also uh, tea at the at the Hotel Ritz, right? In Manhattan, where was that? That was oh, that the Palm Court. Yeah. Was that the Ritz Hotel? I yes. think it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm just, yeah. yeah just. And that was just last. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A few we, months ago. They, they start blending together. <laughs> they right? do. Right. They do. All right. Yes, that was uh, that was an amazing. Yeah. Place. Okay, so we like the Ritz. Yes. The the oddly enough though, the Paris Ritz, their afternoon tea was just sort of. Eh, it was French. It was. <laughs> there's no pomp and circumstance. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. They're like, here's your afternoon tea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, we love the I'm French. I'm going to go. I'm going to go smoke a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so before I move on, I just want to say that with uh, the last, I, I already said last thing with Lady C. But the other thing I wanted to mention was that I had asked Lady Carnarvon if there was going to be a third Downton Abbey movie. Uh-huh. And she said, that's up to you. Right. America. Uh-huh. Like yeah, how yeah. the second movie went over was going to really determine if yeah. it was going to go forward. Right. Well, guess what? Yeah. Article had gone to print 
and it was announced just when that happened. I mean, like within a week. Wasn't yes, it? yes, that they were going to be starting the third yeah. Downton Abbey movie. Right. So, so excited yes. about that. Yeah. And another tie to Downton Abbey mm-hmm. was in the first movie. All right. There's a subplot oh, about yes. Princess Mary. Uh huh. Who is the daughter of King George V uh-huh. and Queen Mary. Right. And, and and the sister of the two uh, kings. The two kings. The yep. one that abdicated right, right. for Wall Simpson and then the one who is was Queen Elizabeth's father. Right, and right, right. King Charles' mm-hmm. grandfather. So there's a subplot of, right. of Princess Mary because the movie's all about this the the Crowley's getting ready for this. The visit. Royal visit, yeah, mm-hmm. and so Princess Mary's in this little, little story about her husband, and it's kind of implying that he's sort of in control, yeah, and yeah, she's yeah. a little subservient, yeah. but you know it has a good ending, right? And I was rather intrigued about this this subplot of Princess Mary, mm-hmm. and found out that there was a recent biography a couple right. years ago by mm-hmm. Elizabeth Bland- Blasford, and she wrote about Princess Mary, kind of this forgotten yes. princess, but maybe the first modern princess, that, yep. that's that's her assertion, right. Right. that she's like Princess Di, mm-hmm. because she went and she did things. She right. literally rolled up her sleeves and worked in kitchens and that to, right. to help the misfortunate. And, and she's also involved with, uh, you know, taking care of soldiers uh, during World War One, Exactly. And, and that sort of thing. So she just, yeah, kind of got into it. Right. So she ended up marrying a a very wealthy aristocrat. Yes. LaSalle. Mm-hmm. Or Lassell. They say Lassell. Right. And with his money... She w- had a lot of freedom because even right. though she was a royal, yep. not necessarily, yeah. you yeah. know. Not, not a whole lot of uh, loot went with that one. No, no. So their, his ancestral home was Harewood House. Uh-huh. And the some of the movie is filmed at Harewood. Right. And, but uh, some of it was uh, CGI'd. And, and so there's kind of a cute story. We, we we're at, you know, we're asking the, the, the tour guide there because we went to Harewood yeah last so, fall right right just FYI. yeah and so uh and so uh you know <laughs> uh, we're asking about this a look of weariness comes over her face and she says uh the that ballroom I, the ballroom the ballroom scene it's uh, there's no ballroom here that was all Hollywood effects and it's like oh I was a little crestfallen because yeah. I was really looking forward to that. But yeah. she said, yeah, people kept coming in after that movie. Yeah. Where's the ballroom? Yeah. She's like, there's no ballroom. Yeah. So. That's great. There you have it. Yeah. And I I really enjoyed it. They have a phenomenal library in yeah. there uh-huh. and, and the, the setting, mm-hmm. the patio where Tom danced with mm-hmm. his uh, yep. new love interest. Yes. It, that's there. Yeah. So okay. there's some authentic yeah. stuff. Uh, okay. And just, I, if I can just, uh, so it, with our trips, uh, I think we've become aficionados of certain types of tour guides. So, uh, you know, we, we talked about our tour guide in Bath. Yes. And then um, uh, we had a tour guide at the Harwood House who's, he was good, uh, but um, <laughs> maybe a, a trifle bit unctuous. Yes. And and uh, his, he, his laugh and I'm going to do my impression of this laugh. <laughs> 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 that's it. That was it. So that's all I remember about that. <laughs> because we asked him the proper pronunciation. Of Harwood House. Is it Harwood House? Yeah. Or Harewood? Yeah. And he goes, well, that depends on, on who you ask. <laughs> and then he goes into this. <laughs> and you thought he was like. <laughs> Having a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> it was just. Yeah. Odd, anyway. really, really oddly eccentric. So, okay, just a reminder that more of Lady C, Highclere uh-huh. Castle, Downton Abbey, is in the current issue of Tea Time Magazine. Yes. And also a reminder that that's what we do at Barb's Tea Service. If yes. you want to, if you're a big Downton Abbey fan, Gilded Age fan, or you want to learn more, this is what we do for yep. our tea talks. Yes. And as you can tell, 
I really love to talk about it. So it's great. All right. So keep that up. And it's also in our blogs too. Mm -hmm. All right. So now uh, we've got a few minutes left yep. and wanted to share some viewer feedback. Yes. Which we love. We absolutely love. And one of our listeners went back to our podcast on Scotland. We right. talked about how we had right. Scottish breakfast tea uh -huh. earlier. And we had noted that at one of the, the afternoon tea we had at Preston Field, right. we had haggis croquette. Yes. And she sent us an article uh -huh. from the the gentleman who writes economics for English majors. That's right. Which yes. I can really appreciate. Uh -huh. And do you want to talk a little bit about this this vegan Hager. So the uh, so uh, this the, this author attended some uh, some event in in uh, Scotland and was um, noting that he saw on the menu that they were offering some some abomination called vegan haggis. Yes. And so uh, so haggis uh, um, is is a it's one of those you know peasant foods uh, that people like. And, and so we, I, we actually tried it and, uh, it, uh to me, uh, it's like, uh, close to like a stuffing, Yes. you know, it's, it's that very kind of savory, um, but it's made up of very cheap meats and, oh, and actually, uh, uh, just, just occurred to me also has something, uh, in common with clotted cream in that you cannot legally purchase either haggis or clotted cream in the U S you, oh, Okay. Because of the way they process Because, or? yeah, it's just, it won't pass inspection. Well, the haggis is comprised of off, uh, well, offal? Yeah, uh, O-F-F-A-L, <laughs> and which is just, you know, bits of, of, of uh, parts that, you know, you don't normally eat and, um, or like on purpose. Yes. <laughs> and anyway, it's processed and mixed in with, uh, with oats and grains. And, right. And, and, and cooked in, um, uh, Originally, they were cooked in, I think, intestines and, yes, and yes. Uh, uh, steamed, and so that that's kind of how uh, how that comes about. It's but. you literally don't want to know how the sausage is made. That's right? that's <laughs> correct. Yes, but anyway, so then vegan haggis is um, like what? <laughs> it's I I think you had said it. It was filling a void that wasn't there. That's right. Yes, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Anyway, so. Um, how many, where are we with? Oh, I got okay. a couple of minutes. All right. So I thought that was kind of, that was funny because, you know, he likened it to, yeah. you know, if, if there was a need, yeah, it would be yeah. as if, you know, if there's a substitute, right. then you would expect if that yeah. one product that right. its price goes up, right. maybe people are going to buy this more, right. yeah. but no one, no takers. Mm, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So, the other item I wanted to mention was we had some listeners who were very curious about the salt cellars. Right. Do you know what they did? They actually went. Yep. And, well, yeah, you do know what they did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, we, they have a collection of salt cellars. So they went and, and yep. kind of did a treasure hunt uh -huh. within their yep. own right. china cabinets and that. And they shared some pictures of them uh -huh. and also gifted me one with, it was Art Deco. Amazing. Pressed yes. glass. Yes. But it has a very tiny reservoir. Yep. So if I was using this to serve clotted cream or lemon curd, uh -huh. I probably would give it to somebody else. There because you go. I like a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciate it and I love it and it's going to be in the blog. Okay. So I think we're. Oh, I think we are. Oh. Uh, there it is. All right. It's telling us it is time to wrap up. Yep. And I want to again thank on TV right. for letting us be in the studio. Yep. Thank my wonderful co-host. You're welcome. And we will, all the things we talk about are in the, the blog. Right. And et cetera. So yeah. <laughs> I want to thank everybody. Lo love the viewer feedback. Yep. And Keep again, it coming. All right. please stay tuned. We are out.